underneath the surface, inside of us all, exists a story. Hidden from the majority, every individual possesses a narrative, an arc, an explanation to why he or she is, says, and does the things that they do. My name is Jordan Owens, and this is the community where I find myself. These are the stories of those journeying with us all, and these are the stories that matter. In just a short period of time, he went from coaching middle school basketball to establishing a culture and leading a program to heights the community had never imagined, all the way to an appearance in the Texas UIL State Basketball Finals Tournament. But the climb to the top of a mountain in anything in life requires enduring some of the deepest valleys. And that's exactly what our first guest of The Jordan Owen Show has done. I'm so excited to sit down and listen to the story of Sulphur Springs head basketball coach, Clark Cipolletta. Clark Cipolletta, how's it going, man? It's going well. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being on here and sitting down with us and hanging out. We're in the beautiful, prestigious Wildcat gym. This place gets rowdy on weeknights during winter and, and early fall, man. And that's oh, about yeah. to start. It is. Um, this is an exciting time of the year, and um, I know a lot of people, uh, it's not a huge gym, but just the atmosphere that our fans and community create here is top notch. And, um, you know, it's a real special place. You can just feel the energy, and even uh, opposing fans have really said, you know, when they come here, it's such an intimidating factor and such an edge for Sulphur Springs. It's almost like a mecca turning into it a little bit, a mecca of <clears throat> basketball in Northeast Texas right here. You just, like you said, you walk in the doors and it's a packed house, you can't find a seat. Right. So, the funny story, uh, my first head coach in game, we were playing Wills Point. It was in 2014 was my first head coaching uh, job and first head coaching game. And uh, I remember looking up in the bleachers, there were 22 people here. I counted them on my hand before the game started. So now when we pack it out, it's, it means a lot to us. And, uh, you know, um, it, it's for the kids. Um, the kids work so hard and to see the community really support them is uh, really special. You know, we want to we want to take it back. We want to learn okay. more about Coach Sipoletta, Coach Sip, and what brought you to Sulphur Springs and, and being the head coach here. And so we want to kind of go through your journey and, okay. and let you tell your story. And that's what we're here to do tonight. And so I just kind of want to go back real quick. First time I met you, I don't know if you might not remember this. I was a substitute teacher for like a short stint for okay. SSISD, and you were still at the middle school. So we got to chill a little bit and just. That was probably five years ago, I guess, at this point now. I was like, man, that's a, that's a really cool dude. And I know that you have an awesome story. And so let's let's start. Let's go way back. Okay. 19, well, 1988. You were okay. born, right? Yeah, yeah. born and raised in uh, New London, Texas. Okay. Um, just a small town, 900 people. Um, I, most people know it because it was a school that blew up um, way back, I think, in the 30s. Killed like two, 300 kids. And so it's kind of uh, nationally known. Um, it was the first uh, oil leak um, or gas leak in the school when uh, like 322 a janitor comes in, flips on a switch and it blows up and kills just a ton of kids. So that's really why the uh, town is kind of known, unfortunately. Um, it's just a small good old town uh, of New London, Texas. So uh, my mom and uh, dad uh, raised me in uh, New London, and uh, but really my grandparents raised me for the, the majority of the part. My mom was always there. Um, she worked really hard, worked multiple jobs. Um, my dad and my mom were split up, so I would go to my dad's on some weekends, and um, it was cool uh, growing up. He coached me uh, in baseball growing up. He was a big-time baseball fan. He's from uh, East Boston, so he loves the Red Sox, the Celtics, and the uh, reason why I'm a fan to this day. Um, but uh, he, he grew up coaching us in all sports, me and my friends, and all the way up until junior high. It was a big part of, uh, you know, me loving the game. I had such a good uh, grandparents. My grandparents were, uh, to me, the most amazing people in this world, and really uh, the reason why I turned out, you know, halfway decent was because of them. They made me go to church, they held me accountable, um, and just really brought out the best and showed me how to live. And um, to this day, you know, I can really thank them for that. So uh, you and your buddies, a lot of y'all went to college together. Mm -hmm. Where was that? So first, I, I, they went to Kilgore College, which is a junior college nearby. I went to Letourneau, um, had an opportunity to play basketball there. Um, it didn't last very long. Uh, I had an event uh, kind of take me away from that. My dad uh, committed suicide at uh, my freshman year, and um, you know I didn't necessarily respond the way I should have. Uh, so I got a little sidetracked, dropped out of 
college for a short little stint and didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was an architect major at that time and um, I really liked that aspect of, um, you know, designing houses and math and all that. And um, so uh, I ended up going to take some night classes at Cougar College. My mom talked me into it to keep me, you know, around it. And then uh, the next year, my buddies transferred all to Stephen F. Austin. I thought it'd be a good idea to go to SFA and uh, it took me four years and ended up graduating from there. And it was an awesome experience and glad I got to do it for sure. What was one of the, the biggest things that kind of helped you after your uh, dad's suicide and kind of, you know, get out of that mm -hmm. valley? I know that's a, a horrible situation to go through and, and anyone who goes through that situation, no matter what time of their life they're in, right. being in college, that's mm -hmm. a big time, you're going through changes, you're kind of figuring out who you want to be and what you want to do with your life and, and then something like that happens. What, what was the biggest thing that kind of helped you get back on track? I had such a good support system. I mean, my friends are just the most amazing group of guys um, that I could ever really count on and my grandparents. Uh, once again, uh, going back to them, they just really, uh, you know, help, help me understand it, help me. Uh, and I grew up in church, and um, so I understood, you know, for a, a majority part of, you know, it's not a bad thing, you know, that everything happens for a reason. God wouldn't give you more than you can handle. Um, so when I began to look at it in those uh, lenses, um, it just made a little bit more sense, and uh, just uh, some type of uh, joy came over me. And um, my dad was an awesome guy. I know it kind of sounds bad. Uh, when, when that happens in your life, but uh, he struggled with a lot of things. He, uh, he had multiple heart, heart attacks. He was in uh, two or three relationships that weren't very healthy. Um, he, and he struggled with depression. He was bipolar and he was just depressed all the time. Um, and I try to be as happy as I can every single moment of every day. And um, I, I hope that message from, from him, you know, um, leaving helped me, you know, understand things that I needed to understand. Well, folks here at Silver Springs yeah. High School can definitely see it, that, that happiness coming from you. You always walk around with a positive attitude, a smile, and it, you know, it changes everybody's day. And, and so you going through that situation, like you said, it, it's helped you to help others. You teach kids how to respond to adversity, and it's amazing of, of what things they can accomplish. And even um, I have kids in the classroom when stuff's going bad at home or, you know, a girlfriend, boyfriend uh, type of deal. But I'm just, you know, really sitting down and talking to them about how to handle adversity. And I, I think I'm more of a life coach than a basketball coach at times. And, uh, and somebody asked me one day, what's, you know, the biggest basketball lesson you teach? I said, it's adversity. Like, kids don't know how to handle it at times. And uh, I think that situation in my life really helped me, uh, you know, geared up you know, to help kids handle that. So I think that's kind of the biggest aspect I can provide. Let's talk about your family, okay. your wife. Oh. Where'd y'all meet? So, How'd that happen? I think you know Dub. Yeah. Dub was the first one who asked me. He's like the first guy I knew here. Uh, I went to Davis Street for a little bit and um, he asked me to play some church league softball. So I was like, you know, let's go. Um, so uh, there was this lady out in outfield, you know, I was generally going to start a conversation with her. I was like, yeah. hey, uh, you know, does your husband come watch you play tonight? <laughs> She's like, I'm not married. I was like, yes. yes. <laughs> we dated for like 11 months, ended up getting married, and, um, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. Got two kids and a third one with Day Day yeah. <laughs> staying with That's us. Right. So, uh, you know. so, you know, you had a fantastic season last year, yeah. um, made it the furthest that Silver Springs had ever made it in, in the playoffs in basketball and made it down to state in <laughs> San Antonio. So you had to have been getting some phone calls, man. Right? You had to have been getting some phone calls. Maybe, maybe a few phone calls. Right. I, I had some doors, you know. Um, I tell people all the time, you know, where God wants me, He's going to put me in. Uh, I, I don't, I'm never looking to leave, and I tell yeah. people this all the time because it's such a wonderful place. And, uh, you know, I would like to be a college basketball coach one day. That, that is my dream. Uh, um, and, you know, I had some, some different calls about that come up, but just none the right opportunity or the right place at the right time so um, you know I'm, I'm where my feet are I'm not thinking about you know college I'm not thinking about my next job I'm trying to make this place the best place I can leave it and uh, my motto has always been a life every situation I find I'm gonna try to make it better and I just hope you know each year I'm here I can make it a better place than I found it and y'all do a little bit of CrossFit together is that right we do so she's been doing it for six years she's okay. crazy um, and you know I didn't like lifting weights you can look at me and just tell like that's not a weight lifter um, but I've always liked competing um, still to this day, I love to compete. There's just something about competing and trying to just be the best version of yourself. So I don't know if you know much about the CrossFit here, but the, the atmosphere and the culture of it is awesome. You would think, uh, you know, there's a lot of judging and comparing, but some, uh, everyone there is so supportive. Uh, Kiffer Davis does such an amazing job of just bringing out the best of everybody. And you have 
people from all aspects of life. You have older people, younger people, taller people, smaller people, bigger people, skinny people. And, uh, you know, they're just so supportive because they all, you know, just trying to become the best versions of themselves. So um, it's, uh, it's a unique um, thing to get into. Silver Springs basketball. Yeah. Man, what a turnaround because, you know, I graduated here in 2009 and not knocking those years at all, right. but just the culture has changed so much in such little time. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a winning culture at all. There's not a lot of, there was just no pride in the basketball program and it hurt me because I came from a place at uh, New London um, where we were really competitive every year and, and, and we ask a lot of our kids. We ask them to be up here in the summertime, we ask them to be up here before school and there's a big commitment to it. But I knew if um, we wanted to take that extra step, you had to get those kids to buy in. Well, those kids in the middle school are, are learning the same mm -hmm. values and the same uh, culture uh, points that the high school kids are going through as well. Is that right? It, they are. And a and cool thing, when I first got here, there wasn't a lot of Little League. Uh, Brian, Brian Burney does an amazing job with our, our little dribblers, but there wasn't um, that culture set in place. So I began to coach a third and fourth grade group. I coached a fifth and sixth grade group. So like the seniors I have now, I coached them in third and fourth grade. So I got to build those relationships with these kids. And I think that goes a long way because um, all these kids would run through a wall for me, but it's because they know I love them. They know I care for them and I'm looking out for their best interest. How do you create those individual relationships with I think just students? talking to the kids, getting to know them. Um, they're more than basketball players, they're more than just kids. I, I really seek to, to try to impact every kid, um, you know, I come across. And in order to do that, you have to ask questions, you know, who's your mom, who's your dad? Do you have brothers and sisters? Oh, what's she like? Um, and have general conversations with kids and, and give them advice. Um, my kids know all the time that uh, my expectations for them are so high because I want them to achieve in life. And when they know that they have somebody who's going to look out for them, hold them accountable every day, they might not like it within that, that moment. Um, but I think that goes a long way with kids. How do you get all those different personalities, all those different backgrounds right. to come together to be one team? So a lot of prayer. Yeah. Just a lot of <laughs> praying. Uh, you know, prayer does help. But just understanding. I don't, I don't think I could coach at a place that didn't have kids who, who needed that help. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't know, Highland Park or somewhere like, to, to me, um, I think my calling in life is to help kids that are underprivileged, to help kids from all aspects of life. And I think we have a good dose of that here in Sulphur Springs. And, um, you know, just trying to get them to buy into the vision is, is tough, but it's the standards that you put in place every day that helps that. Um, I think uh, I, we take pride in our, our slogan, team over everything. And um, anytime we have a conversation or anything that we do, I never say I, or I never say, hey, that was your fault. I always say, that's our fault. Um, we need to do this. Um, so we really make it about the team. And if we don't make it about the team, we, we know pretty quick, Coach Sip's pretty upset about it. And uh, I think when you just do that day in and day out, and um, you just hold them to those standards, um, they begin to believe and see it uh, really pay off. So. Uh, um, it, it's really worked, but once again, our kids have really bought into that. And uh, I tell people all the time, you got to see the picture, you got to paint the picture, and then you got to sell the picture. You got to sell it every day. And one day that you don't sell it, that could be the breaking uh, point in your culture. So every day we're going to come in here, we're going to sell it to be our best, to be part of a team, um, to have high standards, and um, it's kind of worked up to this point. I'm getting fired yeah. up right here. I know. I, I want to go play some <laughs> basketball. And, and you know, the team goes beyond just the, the folks wearing the jerseys and the, sure. the coaches in the suits. By the way, y'all look sharp in those suits. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, the team goes beyond that. Last year, very special moment. Uh, yeah. Or last season, I should mm. say. Very special moment with, uh, with Dylan mm. uh, Jester. Uh, let's talk about his story. And I, I know folks have seen it. They've seen the videos. They were here for the moment. Right. Uh, just tell a little bit about uh, Dylan and, and what he's meant to you. So I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but Dylan <laughs> is my all-time favorite kid. He, he was supposed to come over last night and watch some uh, uh, college basketball. Um, and we, we still stay in touch all the time. And he's breaking down videos with me. And he wants to be a coach. And uh, I, I, I can't wait to hire him. I tell my assistants all the time, when my boy Dylan gets a, <laughs> gets a diploma, y'all are fired. <laughs> uh, I'm making make room for him. But um, he's such an amazing kid. Always wanted to be a part of basketball. Um, just a funny kid. Loves the game. Shares that same passion as I do about the game of basketball. So, uh, you know, we hit it off from an early standpoint and really wanted to be a part of the team. And uh, just every chance we could do um, or every chance that we could get, we really tried to, to make him a part of the team. And then to really have that special moment in uh, uh, it was a home game against uh, Mount Pleasant. That was uh, probably one of the coolest moments I've ever had and experienced in, in a game of basketball or in life.
So we'll talk about this year's team coming up here in just a little bit, but let's talk about some guys that you've coached in the past that have moved on and they're playing the next level, which for Sulphur Springs, that's a big thing right. to see some basketball players go on uh, to the next level. So you got Z Victor, who went to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Xavier, who's in uh, Western Carolina. Keiston Willis at uh, Incarnate Word. And then I believe Gigi has just committed there too. Is that he right? He did, Gigi. Okay. And then uh, Jeremiah Rowland Jer is at Eastville College All right. playing. So. How does it feel to, to have those guys? And a lot of those guys grew up in your program, right? For sure. And they, and they come to you at an early age and really want to play college basketball. And, you know, we tell them all the time, if you want to go do that, you have to be in the top 2% of Texas. And it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of effort. And they really bought into the vision uh, that, that we had in place for them. You talked about adversity a little bit. <clears throat> that happens in life. That happens in the game of basketball. Your team kind of experienced a little bit of adversity right before the start of last season. Uh, you know, just you a little had, bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Michael Jefferson, Victor, yeah. and then Gigi uh, all transferring uh, to another high school. Right. And, and uh, just talk about that. What went through your head whenever you first heard that that was going to happen? But then how did you feel about the season and about your team that you had? So once again, in life, I'm very much uh, consider adversity pure joy. Like uh, if a kid's not in my program, doesn't want to play for us, or you know, just a family, like in that situation, the family just moved, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna coach the kids I have and we're gonna work hard and we're gonna try to make the best of those moments. You know, I was, uh, I love those kids so much and they, they meant a, a special part to me and I, I wanted to see them through, I really did. And uh, But you know, stuff happens in life and you can't dwell on it. And the more you dwell on it, the more you're gonna, you know, uh, not, have a good outcome. So uh, I just told our kids, you know, a lot of people are, are counting you out now. Three really good guys uh, left the program. So uh, what now? And I just kept saying, what now to them? What now? What are we going to do? I would post um, sayings in our locker room. I would post Facebook quotes, I would see. Um, and I think that, that that team last year took it uh, such a challenge to really prove that they were worth something and they really were and uh, um, with those kids leaving we were just loaded with talent they have kids that um, are winners I tell people all the time some of those games I don't even know how we won they just the kids refuse to lose um, and you know it was such a special ride I don't know if I can ever uh, relive a team like that that just you know just found a way to get it done and, and we had adversity last year you know Keiston breaking his foot Xavier breaking his toe um, Day Day uh, playing with a concussion for seven games. I don't know if we had our whole starters for any district game, but once again, we just found a way to win. Had two buzzer beaters. I mean, it didn't look the prettiest, but once again, the, the, the group I have was just a group of winners, and, and they'll go down in history as a group of winners as well. Some, uh, some team magic happening in this it building. And a lot of prayer. <laughs> a lot of prayer. You got a new season coming up. That one's behind you. Uh, fantastic finish. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are you what are you expecting for this team this year and, and what are your goals that you've had uh, set for the team? So I'm not a big goal person where I'm gonna say hey We're gonna go win the state championship or hey, we're gonna win district I just talk about each and every day like let's be our best today If we're our best today, then we have a chance of being our best tomorrow And then the next day we can be our best and in the end we're gonna be excited where we are and uh, we're, we're very focused on today and I think today is the most important day of your life and if if, if you get the most out of that day I um, mean you have a chance to succeed and this group is special as well and I've coached a lot of special teams um, this group might be the most special at sharing the basketball and my other groups have shared it really well but uh, like with Keiston he's the all-time leading scorer in Sulphur Springs history you have Xavier who was the uh, uh, overall MVP of our district and then Jeremiah Rowland, who was the defensive MVP of our district. So those are three really key players that we're going to miss. But with this group coming, you don't feel like you're missing those because I have younger guys who are stepped up, um, guys that have really worked hard to replace those guys. And uh, I guess time will tell if we can replace them. But I really like our group. I think we're tough. I think we share it well. Um, and more importantly, they love the game of basketball. And I always want to coach kids that, that love the game of basketball because that makes it fun to be up here because they want to be up here and they're, they're begging to get into the gym and they're, I'm not having to beg them to come at 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning for sunrise shooting. I don't have to beg them to show up to weights. That's just the expectation they have because uh, they all want to be winners and they, they, they know what it takes in order to do that. Well, Clark, we, we appreciate you yeah. talking with us. Everything that you've told us here tonight, uh, everything that you believe 
everything that you preach and that you uh, teach to your, your team and then the students that you impact every day. We know it's real because they go out and they live it too. And so uh, we, we thank you for sharing your story. Uh, the impact that you've had already here in your short time in Sulphur Springs, uh, it's being felt beyond this gym. Uh, it's being felt out in the community and uh, everybody's rallying around this team. We're looking so forward to, to watching you guys and supporting you guys this year. Thank you so much for coming yeah, on and sharing you your story. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That was, it was awesome. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Thank you.